If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this long-ass episode... Ooh, I love the long ones. ...of Mind Pump, for the first 40 minutes, uh, we have some fun light conversation we Jesus, talk about 40 minutes we talk about laughing at people <laughs> at horrible things uh i'm kind of guilty of laughing at things i probably yeah, shouldn't me too i'll admit it we talk about justin's likeness to world war ii veterans in terms of his face <laughs> it's just the face it's that like profile you gotta listen to put this one together yeah, really I mean, weird yeah. then we talk about adam's soccer mom wheelhouse <laughs> and his cleaning product line the imaginary one that we came up with on the show that we will never do for real uh, we talk about I yoga. Think it's a good idea. We talk about yoga. We talk about insoles and the importance of feet. And then uh, we mentioned uh, also uh, Organifi. That's one of our sponsors. By the way, if you go to Organifi.com, O R G A N I F I.com, and enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get a fat discount. That's the only thing that'll get fat, by the way. Everything else gets dirty. Fat. Then we get into the questions. The first question is. How do you recommend using Maps Prime and Prime Pro without spending hours a day working out? Really, the question revolves around how do you get fit and healthy without having to go into the gym and doing all kinds of crazy stuff all the time? We actually provide the answers to this on how you can kind of mold your life around these things. Then we answer the question, how do you change the composition of your body? Uh, in other words, you don't lose weight, but you gain muscle and burn body fat. Hmm. Do they you need to, recomping? Huh? I haven't heard that. Too. That's it. Do yeah. you need to be in a surplus in terms of calories or a deficit? Find out the answer in this episode. Then we talk about our thoughts on the functional patterns guy. This is somebody on Instagram who's got some great information who has been a little dickish lately. Yeah. Uh, then we talk about uh, how how Adam in particular handles people telling him what he should and should not do. In particular, people are telling him he needs to start having babies. <laughs> all he does is practice. Mm, <laughs> doesn't yeah. finish the job. Yeah, fit. Go, go all the way. Also, in uh, this month, if you enroll in any MAPS program or MAPS bundle, we're going to give you our most popular program for free, MAPS Prime. Now, remember, MAPS Prime, there's a self-assessment compass that teaches you how to prime your workouts. And this works for any workout, by the way, whether you do maps, CrossFit, uh, martial arts, you're playing a sport, whatever. If you prime your body properly, it makes your workout that much more effective. So basically enroll in any of our programs, get prime for free. However, if you enroll in the super bundle, which already includes prime and is also one year's worth of exercise program, we're going to give you prime pro for free, which is our correctional version of prime. Or if you enroll in the Prime or Prime Pro bundle, which obviously has both of them, then we're going to give you MAPS performance for free. So in other words, enroll in any program, you're going to get something for free this month in September. All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com and enroll. You know, I have this mean thing that I do still. What's that? That uh, I feel bad about. It's not even something I do. It's a, it's a thing. It's a way I think that's kind of mean. Hmm. So there's actually there's two things uh, that I will always seem to always laugh at that I feel bad about. <laughs> that you're mean. Who are you mean to? It's it's mean, dude. It's a mean thing to laugh about. Uh. But like when kids uh, are in public and they're crying, but they're not like hurt. They mm-hmm. just have that like. Uh, uh, <laughs> like whining yeah. yeah and the parents are with them in the grocery store and the kids just like uh, funniest thing I've ever seen in my life every time every time oh I laugh but it's really mean because the kid is obviously in distress mm. not that much are they it's, it's, it's normally fake crying and right? the parent that's why it's funny to me because the kid is, the parents ignoring them because yeah. it's like ridiculous they're just like uh, yeah. you guys watch that YouTube video <laughs> where the the kid's crying and then the mom walks out the room so the kid stops and then walks around finds his mom falls on the floor starts crying again yeah <laughs> that's what kids do dude totally yeah, they do that all the time getting. and then the other thing that makes me laugh is uh mean is when people fall in public oh it's the best it's <laughs> what is that about like uh, injury uh, uh, and stuff like that, that that we find comical why is that it's not injury because when i see someone sure, actually remember like the, remember like the three stooges right. like half of the the comedy skit was like hitting each other on the head and like poking their eyes out right yeah. like what what is that that's so 
funny about that for us. I don't know, dude. Yeah, but I don't know. It's kind of fucked up. I right? saw that we enjoy watching somebody else get hurt. So I saw. I might even told this on. We the, all do. I, I might even said this on the podcast once. I saw an old lady fall in the parking lot once from the one of the gym that I used to own. And you laughed. Dude, you know why I laughed? You would have laughed too. You're going to hell. <laughs> she fell, but I, I'm not exaggerating. It took her a full minute to fall down. It was, uh, it was the slowest fall I've ever seen uh, in my life. Timber. She like, she, yeah, she kind of tripped and she's like, uh, 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 and it was like, and then, and then, and then, and then her legs went up in the air. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. That's terrible. I've seen a couple of those. Those are, those are great. The slow motion falls? Yeah, the slow motion ones. Oh, man. It's just like... Did, yeah. I ever, did I ever tell you about the time I threw a basketball directly at an old lady's face? What? So, yeah. Okay, now you've crossed the line. No, 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 no. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you a story for what happened. <laughs> so when I used to manage... Intentionally? No, not in touch. Oh, it's like, whoa, dude. So it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> you guys are like, fuck, that's not even. So, but Justin's still laughing. Uh, so, uh, as a manager, face. I had a few, when I used to manage gyms, there was a few hallmark things that I would do. And one of them was, is I would have fun with my staff every day and I'd fuck with my staff every day in, mm. a, in a teasing way and we'd have a lot of fun doing it. It's just what I did. And so I had this front desk dude that worked for this young kid. And oh God! I already know what happened. I'd here. poke fun at it. We'd, we'd I'd fuck with them all <laughs> the time. See what's coming. But uh -huh. it's because I had the. Kid. You know why? It's because you're not athletic, dude. You made a bad pass. Well, I, I, got, I guess I kind of did. <laughs> I already know, dude. I, so, so let me tell you what happened. So hey, I, bro, look out! Yeah, yeah. So he was on. He, he was always. I put Quick him under dart. my under my wing, so I would tease him on uh, on top of it, and I was behind him while he's standing at the front desk, and I got the basketball, and I meant to bounce it off the back of his head. But he was fucking sharp, dude. He knew what was coming. He so he, he like he moved and you yeah, pelted some lady. Right in the oh face, dude. My oh my God. That's bad. Right in, the right in her glasses. Boop. <laughs> right in the face, in her glasses. She covered her face with both of her hands. Oh, oh <laughs> my. That really uh, happened to you? And kind of bent you over asshole. and held her face. Did she cry? Oh, and for a split, like for a split second, I was like, how can I blame this on? Yeah. Someone else. Yeah, how do I get out of this? <laughs> yeah. But I didn't. I took the blind. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. But free membership or what? You had to do something to her. No, actually. You didn't <laughs> even give her a free membership after no. that? I probably sold her something afterwards. Oh, my God. I've been so afraid. I was oh. probably like, hey, listen, because I hit you in the face with a basketball on accident, <laughs> what I'm going to do is offer you a discounted rate right. on our personal Here's some supplements. Yeah. And yeah. I noticed your posture is a little certain way. You know what might help with that? No, but uh, I was I felt horrible, but it was also funny when she, I found, when she wasn't hurt. But the fact that she got hit in the face, yeah, the basketball. That's, oh, that's epic, dude. Man. It was really bad, dude. Yeah. There was no animosity, huh? She didn't like that. I would think she'd be pissed. She got mad, but then I'm adorable to old ladies. Mm. So uh, she was okay with it. Like, seriously, no joke, dude. If there was a, a contest for who could attract the most old ladies, when I say old, I mean like 70 and older, yeah. I would kill everybody. Yeah, you kind of have that vibe. They love me, dude. I believe that. Yeah. For, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. They love me. You get the weird. You, you just want to feed you. The like, young and then the really old. Maybe yeah. I'm like in the. I get the soccer moms. Yeah. <laughs> the soccer moms love me, dude. Yeah. They're all yeah. younger than you. They want to feed soon. you Werther's Originals <laughs> well, you know, all day. Just just shove it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Werther's, you know? Werther's, Werther's Originals. <laughs> yeah, like you just have that face. That's what it is. He probably like brings paint stuff your like that cheeks around, and right? then give you little little Werthers. Take off my take uh, off my panties. Oh, sunny. Oh, sunny. Yeah. You're, you're you're a good kid. Yeah, so. they, one yeah. of them grabbed my butt in the grocery store. I told that story before. Oh, you did tell that story. I remember that. It's just a thing that I, I'm good at. So I'm hoping it's like that when I'm 90. Hmm. You know what I mean? You're still if they pulling. stay still the 70, 80 year old. That's right. Now I'm. You know what I mean? <laughs> the retirement home. You know you're gonna get some action. Now I'm. Yeah. I feel like Justin would be good with that. That. that yeah. Ar area. With, with that older. Age. I do. Yeah, I do. Have elderly. A little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, because doesn't he's kind of like a. There's a kid like quality about him. He's, he's you know yeah. he's adorable a little bit. He I feel like I remind him. I remind them of those pictures of like I'm like every guy that like came back from World War II. You know, like I have that kind of face. <laughs> like everybody, everybody always says I what? look like like somebody who came back from World War. Like, II. Like you know those old pictures, like where they're like that's very specific. It's, it's very, very specific. Yeah, I like, swear to God, you like know, you look like you look so like, like my great uncle, you know, <laughs> fucking Carl who or whatever. In, you know what I mean? Who served in Korea? I swear, everybody <laughs> tells me stuff like that all the time. I'm always like walk around. Like, so you don't oh, look like a. You remind me of my grandpa. You don't look like, like oh, a cool. Vietnam vet. <laughs> you no, look no, like no. a World War Two, World War Two American coming back from you know Germany, which just so happens to be 
be the one war everybody's like, that's the best war we yeah. ever fought. Like, it's like, I'm coming back ready to make babies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they, they realize that. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you still get the soccer moms, huh, Adam? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. Soccer moms like me, dude. I don't know what, what that is. It's always mm. been, and it's been that. Same. I've witnessed it. Yeah, I know. I've you're not it making too. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's been, and I mean, it's been that way since I was, I yeah. was 20, dude. It hasn't changed. You know, 20, 25, 30, 35. They still stay right around that wheelhouse, right? So <laughs> getting closer to that age now. I've but, witnessed that. I, we were out or something, and there was a group of them. There was a, what do you call a group of soccer moms? Uh, it's just, I don't know, like a coog fest. A, mm. Yeah, a gaggle. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, but uh, I saw that. I a saw gaggle. there was literally a, a, a gaggle. I don't know if that's the right sure. word of soccer moms, and we were walking by me, Adam, and Justin, and mm. where were we? Where was this? I don't. Know. We were on the Campbell, sp- maybe. Yeah, and they fucking started hollering at uh, you, like, like catcalling. Yeah, like pretty aggressively. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I thought, and so at this moment, I realized, like, I'm like Adam. You know, I thought in my head, I'm like. He's full of shit. And then after I saw it, oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> it's real. I feel it's, like we're missing an opportunity. You should be like uh, on a cleaning product or something. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like just put Adam's like face and body on there. That yeah. was so sexist. Yeah. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> because soccer moms love me. Put hey, me on, on a cleaning product. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> oh, stereotypes. Yeah. 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a businessman. Okay, like that shit would sell. Don't kid yourself, America. You know, like I stick with the old. Oh, shit. Adam's cleaning supplies. I, yeah, yeah. I think they would do well. Anway, look the fuck out. <laughs> huh? I said Anway. Look I might the compete fuck out. though. I might put a flannel on and uh, sell some fucking, you know, like paper towels and shit. Uh, you do look more like Brawny. Yeah. Than the two of us. Yeah, I'm pretty brawny. Yeah. I couldn't sell shit but olive oil. Yeah, yeah, think- you would be in olive oil for <laughs> sure. All day. Balsamic fucking sal. Sardines. Yeah. There was sardines. Stop yeah. it with Just the sardines. Open it up. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Pretty Sardine. much any salad dressing, you would do well. There was a movie where there was this uh where the couples went on a trip. I can't remember what it was. It was relatively recently, although my timeline is skewed when it comes to movies, because the other day I was watching The Matrix, I didn't realize it was over twenty years old. Holy uh, shit, is it really 20? Yeah, dude, it's what? Over. Stop, dude. I just I grew like, like 15, 10 more gray hairs. It's like 15 or 20 years old. It's old. Oh my god. Yeah. No way. Actually, it's not I think 20. it's 20. I think let's find out when the Matrix come out. Uh, let me think here. I'm trying Ignorance to Ignorance is bliss. Uh, I guess we were high school. Were we high school? Yeah, the original Matrix came out in oh, 1999. So it's close. Yeah, my senior year in close high school. Close to 20 20 years. So, Holy fuck! So there was there was a movie with uh, where couples went on a, on a, like a vacation together, and then the wives had took a yoga class. And they were on some Caribbean island, and it was this fucking Italian dude teaching them yoga, and his name was Sal Salvatore, <laughs> and he was such a greasy douchebag. Yeah, that's like the second or third time someone with my name in a movie has been dis- displayed that way. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always some kind of a trainer. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I wonder how much that makes mm. an impact on others because, you know, that show, that movie's probably watched by millions of people. Yeah. And so now people have this image of what Sal probably is like. Yeah. That's your haters who feel that way about yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I teach yoga. <laughs> Because in the movie, he's like, he'll like grab their butt and adjust them, be like, yeah. feel it right yeah. here. Yeah. That's how you feel it. Did I ever them. tell you guys that I Pushing actually paid it. for all my uh, like official yoga certifications and I had this business idea? This was when I was running the boot camps. Wait, 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 wait. So, uh, you ready? You Did you ever go through so that? Listen to what I was going to do. You were going to get yoga listen, certified? I, well, dude, yeah. I paid for it and everything. So, listen to what I did. Um, Adam talking, yoga. this is so bad, right? This goes right in line with what you were saying, though, Justin. So <clears throat> I had ran, I had all these boot camps all over the Bay Area, and absolutely uh, 80% of my clientele was the 35 to 55 year old, you know, soccer mom is what I had. And I remember thinking, like, dude, you know what? I bet you a lot of these ladies would pay me top dollar to come have the, teach them one on one yoga in their house. Oh my God. And I would roll up with like my little basket, dude, like of like fucking candles and incense yeah, that's what you and call like. It. Fucking little, like little radio and everything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and show up and have my sade little, playing in the yeah, back. Exactly. <laughs> Light the little candles, Kenny G. right? Yeah. Dude. And uh, I, I believed so much yeah. in this that I actually paid for it, had it all lined up. 
stupid me, I get it right in the right in like the middle machine. of I'm on this bulk and I'm in the middle of like putting oh, no. on a bunch of size on. I'm like two. <laughs> this is around when I was like two thirty. You're just yeah. way too super out. flexible. Oh, I yeah. just yeah, and I'm like the reason why I didn't do it and I, and I stopped it. I was like I can't do this at this point right now where I'm at in my life with this whole bi- getting big, big bulking up. It's so conflicting with yoga that if I'm going to do that and do it well, they they have to take me seriously. Like, of course, I'm I'm uh, you know I'm playing to the whole soccer moms that probably like me training training them or what like that. Sure, I'm playing into that, but they also I have to be at least you gotta fucking, provide some value. Yeah, I gotta play provide some value, and I am not stupid enough to you know yeah. what I'm saying like I'm not like a total whore, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm gonna be yeah. I'm gonna get good at my craft too, right, but right, right, right. and so I I just accepted that there's no Respect way yourself. I'm gonna get. Yeah good enough to take myself seriously to go and teach it at people's houses right so uh, i kind of bailed on i just i lost the money i think i I spent like 400 something bucks was not a cheap certification have you taken yoga classes yeah i have you have legit yoga classes yeah yeah i've taken a few um what do you think about them I think they're great. I think. Uh, what about I, the meditation part and all that stuff? Have you taken classes like that? Yeah, or? where I've done where the last at the very end, like they they put you in like a lying whatever I forget what they call it. And, Savasana. Yeah, whatever. And or as you, I like to call it, salvasana. Yeah, and, and you lay there and you meditate. You lay on your back. It's the Always one pose I do perfectly. It. So I, I mean, I love, I love yoga. I love everything. I do ab- happy. Day, I love day. everything about all it. Day. But it, when I go to a class, I can't help but look around and think the same thing that I think and I say on the show all the time is that. You know, all the people that are really, really into it are the people that need it the least. And the people that aren't in there need it the most. And it's just, I feel that way about a lot of of, uh, different modalities of training or exercise is that we gravitate towards what we love and what we're good at or whatever, and then we stay in that. And it's like, I look over and I see all these super limber, you know, you know, chicks that love doing yoga five, six days a week, but then they're not lifting any heavy weight. And so their strength so, is whack. So, you know, the yoga, so I took yoga. And by yeah. the way, that's a total overgeneralization. I know that, you know what I'm saying? Because but, it's actually changing. Right. So I, so I took yoga relatively consistently and when i say relatively consistently i mean like once or twice a week for a period of over the course of i'd say six months seven months maybe even a year kind of spotty and uh i hadn't taken yoga classes since until relatively recently where i went back to some yoga classes and the one big thing that i noticed way more men in the class than before way more men and I've been looking up statistics and the, uh, the, the, the makeup of people who take yoga, way, a lot more men are starting to take it now, whereas before it was all women. Now you're starting to see more guys start to take it, which I think is pretty cool. But well, I, I think we're starting to accept the, the benefits behind it. I mean, I think that it was kind of in that category of a little woo-woo mm-hmm. not that long ago, and I think we're beyond that. I think there's enough science and enough people have spoken outwardly about the positive benefits of yoga that you know even the uh, meathead bodybuilder guy <clears throat> is starting to put that together that there's some... Maybe. I haven't, I haven't seen too many. I'm usually like the by far the buffest dude in the class. I'm not even that big, uh, but and especially when I took it, a while ago, God, it has to have been. But that's what I mean, right like there, eight right? Years like ago. guys like you belong in there more than anybody else. Oh, in my dude, opinion. you know what I'm saying? I like, should be doing yoga every day, right? Someone like you, I think, belongs in there more than probably everybody. Else. And by by belongs in there, I mean needs it I need more. It, yeah. But yeah, they need you need it more. Yeah, but so. uh, but I did not. I'll tell you what, I had a bad experience in uh, this particular place, and I've taken yoga from probably about five different places. I've probably done yoga. And this one cl- school, which I won't name because it's relative, it's pretty popular here in the Bay Area, and I won't name it because I know a lot of the instructors and they're really nice. I'm trying, I'm trying to hate. <laughs> no, I don't want to hate on them. Uh, but they, they suck. They totally, a couple of their instructors and their students, by the way, really created this cult like, uh, you know, spiritual righteousness attitude when they would see me, the proto, you know, the, the visually looking like a meathead. Walking into their class, they like scoff at you like, "No, there's the meathead." Yes, <laughs> the one that can't even touch yes. his toes. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually had a teacher laugh at me in class. Oh, wow! And poke fun at me in class. Whoa, that pissed me off. And but she did it. She thought she was being playful, and I have a um, a strong enough sense of confidence that 
it didn't bother me. The part that bothered me. So ha- what happened was I was doing a pose, and she's walking around correcting people. And throughout the class, she'd have inco- she'd have to come and help me. And I've got good body awareness. I just can't get into certain positions. It's right. not because I can't. I don't know the body awareness. I just can't do it. So she'd come over and correct me. And every time she'd do it, she'd giggle a little bit, like Sal. And she'd come over and do it. And she'd say it real loud, right? Yeah. And she actually didn't even know my name. She didn't even say Sal. She'd giggle and come over. So by the time this happened like three times, she kind of laughed a little bit and was just like, you know, you know, you can, you can, you don't necessarily need to do all the poses because they're, you know, because you think you have to. <laughs> and she kind of laughed as she walked away. And then some of the women in the class, I could tell they were looking at me like, mm, you know, the, you, sh- you go back to weights or whatever. Oh my God. And I don't yeah. care. Again, I laugh at myself and I have no problem. Like I said, I'm pretty self confident. The part that bothered the fuck out of me was that this was a business. Right, right. And I owned a business. And I remember thinking, like, you fucking morons. Like, yeah. this is horrible. Missed because, opportunity. Because yeah, not someone a- like you, you, you don't know. You could turn you off so bad. Not only are you not ever going to come back, but you're probably going to talk bad about it to all your guy friends that you know, which is going to decrease the chances of them having anybody Yeah, they're else feeding come. into the, the cultness yeah, of it. And the click. That's why I never got into well, it. Well, I felt bad for potentially an overweight woman that comes in there or, or someone who's very insecure who may get that vibe, which by the way, I've They're, heard, yeah. I've heard people say that like, oh, I don't really? like to go to that one because everybody's so uh, pretentious. Mm. And sure enough, that's the the way you feel. And you see these women that walk in there, you know, with their Mercedes and their fucking expensive, you know, yoga outfits and none of them, you know, all, they, they're in the middle of the day, they don't work and they, you can tell them all. And, and I think I, that's the vibe that I would get, which is ironically so anti-yoga and what it's supposed to well, stand for. Dude, that's for. why I got into mobility. I was, I, I don't want any of that bullshit. Like, I don't, I don't need any of the spiritualness of it. I don't need any of the, you know, the, the pretentiousness and the pants and all that shit. <laughs> You know no what I mean? Pants. I no pants. Need, Justin doesn't need no fucking pants. I don't need fucking pants. Like pants are for pussies. Like I'm out on the field and I'm doing drills. It's all mobility. It's all the same shit. It's just like they they make it into this like religious practice. And of course, I'm speaking completely in generalities. But I actually I I, I like the idea of it. I just don't like the cult that's around it. So. Cult, cult. So cult attitudes uh, can become created and developed around any. Thing. I was gonna say, yeah. So <laughs> you'll find that with resistance training too. Right. I'm sure if you find, I'm sure people will tell you, oh my god, I went to the gym and tried to lift <laughs> some free weights, and all the fucking meatheads looked at me funny, made fun of me. I mean, you'll get that experience almost anywhere. Yeah. And the spiritual side of yoga is actually amazing because if you think of okay, if you think of yoga as, and of course, there's versions of yoga that are quote unquote strengthening and you know yang types of yoga, but the yin types of yoga are they're they're designed to kind of put you in a parasympathetic state, relax the body, teach you how to breathe better. So that's the spiritual side that they add to it, right? Cuz like if you're lifting weights and you're lifting heavy, you kind of want to go in there with some, you know, some energy and some intensity, right? Cuz it benefits it. Hmm. With yoga, you don't want to go into yoga with that energy intensity. You want to go into it with this kind of relaxed, centered state of mind. So the spiritual side of it feeds very well into that, but hmm. when people turn it into yeah, you a can get that from religion. breathing too. Yeah, I mean, it becomes. There's a lot of other alternatives that you know you can get that same experience if you just like work on your breathing. You work on like you know releasing a lot of that tension and not going into you know these mobility drills and stretching drills, uh, holding on to that intensity of it. So mm. I, you, I just get I really annoyed too with with the fact that people go into these like hot yoga and all these like super extreme like power yoga and to like they're trying to like i feel like that defeats the purpose of it on a lot of levels like it would with any form of exercise where you just go in there to fucking win yeah you know what i mean you know this is totally off topic but this just reminded me did i tell you guys about the at the on the cruise the trainer that i was like watching him no okay so they actually have like a gym there and they have a staff of trainers i mean it's a cruise every day six months out of the year so there's they actually have a full personal training business that's being ran. And they out. live on the boat. Yeah, they live on the boat, that's right? so crazy. And I, I thought, dude, that'd be an awesome. As I, a I single dude? I, yeah, if I was single, I'd be all about it. Oh, that'd be fire. The only thing that sucks is like, you know, if you're this I, in the single young dude, I was thinking, I'm like, man, I feel bad for you because you have the Alaskan cruise, which is like <laughs> nobody under the age of 50 <laughs> except for like old, me on there, right? Yeah, yeah. silverbacks. Totally. So uh, anyways, they had this, um, they had, you know, you get a free 
personal training session. Like, you know, they give out all these free f- training mm-hmm. sessions. And a guy that I was gambling with the night before, I seen him, and I'm, I'm in, and there I'm in their little uh, Group X area right there. And I'm, I'm doing my own stuff. And I got my headphones on, and I see him, his wife, and his young boy, who's I think like 12 years old. Uh, they're all on their, you know, this personal training, you know, free appointment. And the guy's, you know, giving his whole spiel and talking about nutrition and, you know, pulling out all the charts and like, you know, telling them how they're going to die and stuff. And (laughs) (laughs) right. Here's your timeline. Right. Right It ends. And then he goes out and he, and I've never seen this. He goes and gets this big, um, I don't even know what you would call them, but you know, like the like when you when the thumbprint, you know, that you do, like we put your thumb on and then you to do your thumbprint. You know? Oh, okay. I don't even know what you call those pads. What oh, you, I don't know. What ink called. pad, giant ink pad. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's a giant ink pad, like oh, this shit. big, right? Let me guess. He put his feet on them. Yeah. Oh wow. So he has them walk, and then they they hit the ink pad, and then they hit a white piece of paper right afterwards, and then he can see, and then he should ba- breaks down their foot and shows where their what a. With their pressure great is. tool. Oh, it was oh, it was brilliant. What but a I, great sales tool. But I, exa- totally. exactly right. It was a brilliant sales tool, and it, I had such a hard time keeping my mouth shut because I'm sitting here listening to the whole presentation and just all three of them getting wowed, and then out comes the insoles, you know, and then he makes oh, these, he makes, sells, uh, sells them all uh, custom insoles. Doctor Shoes got this fucking come. 14 year old kid wearing insoles. And, you know, I'm kind of doing my own thing and I don't ever like get in people's shit because I, I'm, I've been doing this for so long that I like, you know, I'm on my vacation. I don't want to talk fitness, but sometimes there's things like this and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that would eat at me. Right. It's eating at me. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to hate on this guy's business. I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not that guy. But if they ask me something, I'm going to say something. So I'm like exercising like i'm totally acting like the 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 stalker guy or girl now i'm like exercising closer, <laughs> yeah, closer. Yeah. i Looking know he re- over your shoulder I, I know just, he yeah i know he recognizes me from playing poker earlier that night and i'm like so i'm exercising and i've got my headphone like one headphone off so he, he, <laughs> he, inviting he, them yeah guys. right i'm receptive right yeah, and then he yeah, I'm he listening. says hey man how you doing and, this, that, and then like hey good man I say hey how's your how's your little training session going like oh my god we're learning so much <laughs> he's like oh yeah really like, yeah, you got to check this out. I'm like, yeah, I'm not really in the business of like selling people insoles. I'm in the business of helping people with the root cause. Oh, <laughs> and he right was like, uh, oh. And then I then I explained what we do and didn't my, my told him everything. And I said, hey, check this out. I said, this is all free information. Go listen to this. Listen to that. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if it's a really good idea having your 14 year old boy wear insoles right Damn, now. Damn, you cock blocked that. Trainer. I did. I totally Damn. did, and I totally would not do that. That's not my style to do that. But I just I, that, that's way too obvious, though. Come on, right? Like, you have to say something. Well, I just feel like that, and and he he did such a good job that they were so wowed. <laughs> they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is a cool. Well, right, the, the, I mean, the, you might as well replace it with magnets. Well, so that's the, pretty much the, the same first thing. part is great. What a the, cool tool, the, right? Yeah, yeah. like I, I could see how that could be very useful visual tool to show someone what's mm. happening with their foot, mm-hmm. but then to take that and then turn it into... Yeah, let's talk about ankle foot mobility. Yeah. You know, how do we fix this? So uh, what do you guys think about this when it comes to using insoles? Because something just kind of came to me with that. Obviously, if you have an issue with your foot and you're trying to correct it with insoles, all you're doing is you're creating... A crutch. Uh, not only a crutch, but you're going you're gonna to make the imbalance worse because now you're completely removing yeah, any of the muscles of the foot and involvement in the ankle and all that stuff. What if you gave someone an insole, but then you uh, taught them to activate muscles with that insole and then slowly reduce that insole until the point when they had... So in other words, start them where they're at. Pro- the likelihood, though, and the problem mm. with that is that... You'd have to be with co- coaching yeah, them all the time. Yeah, that's not going to happen, right? You, yeah. If you put it... The whole point... But could the, you see what I'm saying, though? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. Well, this is... So what you do with that, and, there's, and they, they make very cool... Uh, training tools for this like you can do like let's say someone has an excessive pronation in their foot you can take these little foam wedges and they make them and you like and you would put the wedge under their under their foot to level their foot out and strike the way it's supposed to and then they do like a single leg toe touch or whatever so and then you remove it and they, they try to keep exactly it like then you remove it and they, so there's lots of there's tools out there to help aid that progress but I would never recommend someone putting an insole in their shoe because then you're mindless lot walking around and we know what's gonna then you know what's gonna happen then is the yeah, body use it for training not just like out yeah of like yeah habit and routine then the the body's gonna end. people don't understand what what you're doing there but if if you have a dysfunction in the foot like that and now mind you I'm not talking about something that's like 
you born with like if you're weird and you have only two toes or something like that and that throws you off balance like, you're not weird exception okay. you're not you're weird. just offended you're, you're special just, yeah. you just offended all yeah. the two-toed people all the two-toed people <laughs> <laughs> well we see a huge dip yeah we're on a we'll roll watch a huge dip in downloads next week uh, <laughs> like, yeah. what happened last yeah, week you were, well you adam were offended sexist, all you the, were... the two-toed people <laughs> damn it so yeah i mean if you got something that you're born with and you and you did totally different i'm not talking about that but if over time you have created some issue, which, and normally, by the way, it's knee or hip or back issues, and then you go see, you know, an orthopedic surgeon or something, and they tell you, oh, yeah, you know, your foot's all fucked up here. Let's do this surgery, and then we can put this insole in, which that's what just, that's what eats, that drives me crazy, because you didn't, you weren't born with that. Something happened where you've lost connection somewhere in your foot that's not allowing the, the muscles that you need to help support you and keep you in in neutral spinal alignment, it's off and you can retrain that and get back. You know, you can get back to that and you know, yeah, it's tedious. Yeah. It takes a little bit of work, but I mean, I tell you what, it's going to keep you off of having to do surgery. It's going to keep you from having to wear insoles and potentially causing other issues on the rest of your body. It's going to keep you from it, having to do uh, cortisone shots. It's going to take, it's going to, it only makes sense that most of our chronic ailments that we have today mm -hmm. are the result of just our modern lifestyle. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. I mean, it just it just makes sense. Like any, if you look at any of these chronic ailments that we have, uh, whether it's uh, you know back pain is super common. Like that's a super common ailment that people will have. That it, it's it's a, it's the cause is just our modern lifestyle, which in modern lifestyle is inactivity and then certain positions that we're in, you know, all the time. This is true for anything. Well, you know, it's crazy. I was talking to my uncle this weekend and. You know he's been he's been diving through our business like crazy, and and he's very well aware of a lot of the message that we put out there. And but he hasn't listened to hardly any podcasts of any of ours, and so he's not full. He doesn't fully understand our message. And we're talking, and, and you know we were talking all business most of the day, and then uh, he brings up um, about getting ready to potentially work with your girl. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling him, absolutely, Casey, you need to do that. I'm like, he, she's been taught by Sal. She's listened to every Mind Pump episode. She's for sure a reflection of a lot of what we talk about. I said, not only do I think it will benefit your body, I said it'll also help you with all the sales funnels and things and marketing that you're creating for us. Because, you'll know our business better. Yeah, you'll really understand yeah. our business. And when, when she starts to apply some of these things to you, I know the way your brain turns and works, it will give you lots of ideas. And he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, but this was crazy, right? And he's like, I just know that a big majority of my problems are stem from my extra weight that I'm carrying. So I just want to lose the weight. I'm just going to start running. Oh, yeah. He goes, I'm going to start running, right? So, oh my God. You know, by the way, he's had, you know, he's had yeah. neck surgery, low back Shit. surgery. He's had hip It's such replaced. a common answer though. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He's so, like, I'm going to go run. And I'm like, no, oh. <laughs> don't, don't you dare do that. So you want to know why I referred him to her? Because some of the things that she brings to the table that she's excellent at that I've learned from her are the things that he will he needs the most help with. So the whole slowing down, functional flexibility, when to apply exercise the right way. Plus, not to mention, because, and I hate to say this, it's, but it is true, sometimes men do better working with women because they don't feel the need to kind of have their show ego. Show off all the time. Yeah, because because a lot of times if a guy trains another man, yeah. that guy who's being trained sometimes wants to lift more because he's with another man. Sometimes when it's the women, that happens too. But other times with the women, they'll feel like, okay, I can kind of show a little vulnerability because yeah. she's training me. And you know, and I, I think that would have been perfect. Well, especially oh, you, if they're you know, super deconditioned. You, you know, know what yes, I said to him? Great. This is what I did with him. I said, take your shoes off, take your socks off right now. <clears throat> I made him and my aunt do the same thing. I said, this is, what, this is the type of stuff Jessica's going to do with you, right? I said... It, you're, this is your thought process. Let me show you what it would really be more like. And so I said, take your shoes off, take your socks off. I walked him. I said, I walked him and my aunt over the wall. I did the prime compass test on them real quick. I said, okay, you know, feel this, feel this, this is where your posture is supposed to be a little bit. And I walked him back over and he has this hallway. That's probably about, I don't know, from here to the end of the wall here. So about 15 feet. And I said, uh, <clears throat> now that I had them all barefoot postured upright, I said, now what I want you to do is you're going to walk to that door over there, but I want it to take you 30 minutes. I'll be back. <laughs> And he was like, huh? He was just like, what? I said, yeah, man. And when you, every step you take, I want you to think about it. And I kind of give an example of how I wanted him to yeah, walk yeah. like hella slow uh -huh. and just being mindful of his entire body and his posture and the things that I just showed him against the wall. And I'm all, this is what you, where you need to start. You need to start here. You need to address 
just becoming aware of. No wonder he hasn't called her back yet. (laughs) (laughs) No, they actually talked today, I guess. I just want to run, man. You know know who she's uh, uh, interning or just kind of volunteering with right now? Hmm. Dr. Brink. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, so she's in his office right now, and she's just helping out, and, and basically just so she can observe. And, you know, you know, Dr. Brink is just such a generous, fucking cool guy, so he's yeah. like, yeah, oh, come hang out. And he's just a, he has a plethora of knowledge, man. Oh, just, dude, yeah. if you could just, if anybody could go and just sit there and, like, observe, mm-hmm. you'll come out of one day more information that you, you, you'll you get in months of taking other courses. Yeah, he's, and classes. My, he's my go-to, man. If there's, yeah. if there's something that I can't figure out with a client 100%, and most any of my clients that are listening to this, they've probably already met him because if they or if definitely they've had an issue. Because mm-hmm. if I can't get to the bottom of it, like that's the guy I go to to reach out and help me. Or if I got something going on with myself, you know, because that's it's how- it's great when you meet someone uh, who not only teaches you new things in a field that you feel that you're an expert in. <clears throat> that's awesome, by the way. If you right. feel like you're like a fuck, I know a lot about my job and I've been doing it for years. And then you meet someone who teaches you a bunch of new stuff about your job. That's great. But what's even better than that is that they change the way you think uh, a, a, about the way you do things. And oh, right. Brink literally did that. It yeah. wasn't just the information that I learned from him. It was changing how I think about things surrounding you know, fitness oh, uh, it's and cha- function. It's changed the it hundred percent has changed the way I talk to a client too. It's changed the way I, I squat uh, assessment, all that uh-huh. looking at the feet and the ankles. Well, I now, look at like it crazy. totally yeah. different now. In fact, that's a perfect example. Take the squat assessment, something squat assessment, something that we've been doing for fuck almost twenty years to yeah. people. Uh, the first place I've always been trained to look is like head, hands, and mm-hmm. their shoulders. Yeah. Oh, I don't even look there anymore. No, yeah, it's yeah. like the, it's the uh, to me the feet tell me so much more about the rest of the body that. Uh, it's the first place I look. And I think that, you know, being somebody who's been in this field for as long as all, we all have, it's probably one of the most neglected areas because it's I've gone this long without really diving that deep into it to really uh, fully understand and grasp it. And it was so funny when he enlightened me and, and showed me all the issues that I had been dealing with for as long as I had and then connected them to my feet. <clears throat> it seemed so obvious. I was mm-hmm. like, it was one of those like hand to face, like, oh my God, like, how have I not pieced this together? Like, duh, of course. Like, I've been wearing shoes like every day of my life forever. Like, of course, I've lost a good connection to the ground. And, and like, what would happen if I wore fucking yeah. snow gloves? Every my toes day? don't have to look like this. I right. Like, what? <laughs> right. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Freaking crazy, yeah. man. Do you think, Justin, it'll save you from having, learning what we've learned, save you from having to get like any type of, because didn't you say you, you might have to get surgery or something? Yeah. Like, 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 like my dad basically got every single toe broken, like so, so he could flatten them out because they were curling excessively underneath his foot. So this hammer toe um, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I fucking, I will do everything I can not to get it's, that. It sounds like a badass, surgery. like a badass wrestling move, but it's not. It's something you don't <laughs> the hammer want. too. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want it. So Did now, you say they had to, you had to get him like broke? Yeah, like they broke all of his toes. Oh my God. Yeah, because you're fucking. Put him out and you want to do it at the same time. Dude, your bones you don't go that grow again. that way. Yeah. And then they have to break them to fix them. And I could visibly see it happening. You know, it's like, oh. Like I have, I have anxiety about a couple things, dude. It's my toes, and then it's my teeth. Mm. It's the T's. Wow, the T's, yeah. the T's. Yeah. yeah. So I, it's a good thing you don't have my, my te- <laughs> now because good thing I don't have because of that. Do you make a conscious effort to go barefoot more often because of that? I mean, is that totally some- and like spread them apart and you know lift up on onto my toes and and get in beast position and yeah, all that shit, dude. I, I'm like like on it. Because, um, yeah, that's that's one of those things. I'm always thinking about, you know, the the state of my toes and my teeth. Well, it, it amazed me when I, after seeing Brink and then going, d- ad- addressing all the issues that I have, <clears throat> and then starting to actually see some progress and make some good moves and making seeing my squat improve and uh, and then my and my ankle mobility and then starting to strengthen that. I, I realized, like, God, how weak my feet were. Like, yeah. My feet were just. Pussies. I like still just, can't do that. You got pussy foot. feet, man. Yeah, yeah just, I can do short foot uh, seated pretty easily now. Standing yeah. is still very difficult, but seated I can kind of do I, it. I, I don't know if you guys mess around with it, but one of my favorite things, and I and I know I did a post about this maybe about six months ago, that I have incorporated into my training. That I like it because uh, 
I'm, I feel like I'm getting to do something, work on a couple of things while also, because f- foot strength just sounds boring, right? Let's be honest. Like, yeah. who wants to go to the gym? Like, hey, I'm going to go work on some foot strength. Yeah, today, right? some foot drills. Right. So if I can find ways that oh, I can- you got a fetish? I can, <laughs> I can incorporate it with something else. I really enjoy it. So the tippy toe squats have been a game changer for me because it, it allows me to work on my, my hip, ankle mobility, and then my foot strength all at the same time. And it's uh, actually kind of fun to do it. I'm mm. actually squatting, and so that I get some, le- I definitely get some leg quad drive going mm. in there. So it's not like I'm just doing some basic foot exercises, and it's kind of cool to to be able to stabilize on your tippy toes like that and squat down with decent weight on your back. It's not that easy, and so it was fun to progress doing that and see uh, how much carryover it had into everything else. Mm. See, I, I do a lot of foot exercises when I'm sitting. I've made it a habit now. So like while I'm sitting. If I'm watching something, if I'm reading, if I'm writing while we're podcasting, I'm constantly doing things with my feet just to kind of, you know, uh, try to get better connection. I noticed that my my foot was so flat and so pronated that first thing I did is I strengthened like short foot so I can strengthen the muscles inside the arch of my foot. Mm-hmm. Worked on my ankles because that also caused my ankles to fucking cave in. But now what I'm really noticing, my pinky like doesn't do shit. Like if I just relax, my pinky is almost off the floor. Like it's not even making contact yeah, with the very, floor. It's very calm. So I'm ha- I'm like consciously gripping the floor yeah, with my to pinky smash that down. Yeah. each time. It's a long, slow, arduous, boring, shitty process. But uh, I'm you, you, yeah, I'm starting to see some. That's why it's not in P90X. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I think if you just do little Feet things 90X. like what, what we're all saying is. You just start to incorporate your. You first become aware of it. I think, and most people are just unaware. They're unaware, like myself, that that was a major issue. Like, had I known that that was a major issue ten years ago, I'd probably be much further along today than I yeah. am now. But you know, because I would be doing these little things like I am right now. I'm, I since we've been sitting here, I've kicked my shoes off already, and I'm moving my toes, and you know, I try to be bare. I just make a conscious effort to do that. Where in the past, I wouldn't even think to do yeah, that. Yeah. I would. You I would just sit there and relax. Right, you don't. I don't think to take my shoes off and kind of. I can be exercising my feet while I'm also doing. That's a good that. point because I'm. I, yeah, subconsciously that's always in the back of my head. So I'll, I'll do drills and I'll do things as I'm um, just hanging out at home, you know, and kind of waiting around or watching TV or whatever it is. Like I'm always kind of like mobility is is on my radar, you know, whether it's the hips or our feet because a lot of driving I have to counter a lot of my seated position driving and especially striking with my right foot constantly yeah, so, yeah. Wait, yeah. Hey, which one of you two took all the fucking juices <laughs> <laughs> I mean I took it I took one I, I went through like two of those you only taken one also yeah okay well I've taken I two so I, can, I, can I be honest of all the 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 because obviously we're sponsored by uh, Organifi so they provide us with all this product yeah it's a good which, thing which we, you know we had we're tested and tried it. or whatever yeah. The one that I was like, eh, I'm probably not going to use that much was the green juice. I know, isn't that funny? And that's my, <laughs> we, we all that's my favorite. We're all fighting over it. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Uh, I, I know. I, I didn't even think I would be using it that much, but that's the one I like the most. No, it's, well, it surprised me how well it tastes. I have, yeah, I've tried. so refreshing. Right, I've yeah. tried green juices, uh, all kinds of different brands, and I've never found a brand that I really like. Mm-hmm. And then to wear it to first make me consistent about drinking it. Because it's one of those things, too, that you got to do kind of consistently first, right? So it's not like um, drink it and then all of a sudden you, oh, my God, my my workout, like when you take creatine, right? Somebody who's never taken creatine before and they go take creatine and they yeah, go work out. Yeah, within five days, you're like, fuck, yeah, I'm way right, stronger. Right, yeah, right away. And within your workouts, you, you typically notice it right away. Something like this. I feel like you need to be using it for like a week or two consistently before you really start to be able to go, oh, wait a second. You know what? Now that I think about it, I haven't had to take a nap. I haven't been like down with this. Yeah, every, it's, every like, it's like the yeah. energy is what yes. I know. And yep. so now I'm experimenting with, because I was doing it uh, once a day, uh, once a day, once every other day, uh, again, because I want to really see if I'm noticing any benefit from it. Uh, again, I like the taste. I like the ingredients. And of course, we like the the company and what they stand for. But uh, I started doing it two day, times a day and three times a day to see if I notice a difference taking it more versus taking it less. And uh, the energy is one of them. It's like a kind of sense of well-being. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my gut health is like fucking amazing. And I can't think of anything else I've really changed aside from that. And of course, my nutrition is good and everything else is good. So it's not like I, I'm, you know, I'm, I just threw that in. Everything else is good too, but it's it seems to be really affecting my gut health very, very well. And it makes sense if you look at the ingredients and stuff, but I didn't expect all that. 
Mm. Well, know? we you did say it, and I, I think we all agreed when we first did uh, sign with Organifi that we said like, ah, you know, I know for sure I'm going to use the protein like crazy. I was interested in what the red juice was all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really use probiotics that often. I use them like as needed, so I wasn't like super excited about that. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much said like, I doubt I'll try the green juice. And hands down. What I've used the most and what I like the most is for sure the green juice. Mm, it's funny. Yeah. Wild. Totally. Today's Quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Quaw. The eagle has landed. Quee-quaw. All right, our first question is from Natural Healthy Warrior. How do you recommend using Maps Prime and Prime Pro without spending hours a day working out? This is a good question, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think Do that it at your house. I don't. I, I thought we kind of talked about this when when we first discussed Prime and how we all use Prime um, and Prime Pro. I it, it to me it's like I, I pick things and I have like an order of operation like. I'm just like anybody else. I have a ton of imbalances and areas that I can improve upon that will make my well-being much better. And uh, any sort of nagging pains I have, I can address those if I put the time and effort into it. And so you just kind of look at it like that. Like, okay, um, how important is it? So if I got things that are, I have aches and pains, things that are limiting me from exercising or feeling good throughout the day, like that's a high priority. So in fact, it becomes such a priority. It becomes more of a priority than even my training session. But if there's areas where you're not really hindered, but you know, you should be working on a little bit. Well, then you intermittently put them in, uh, with your workouts. But uh, this is so individualized, uh, because I absolutely can see where some people absolutely could be and should be spending hours probably working on Prime Pro. Yeah. And then other people that, you know, it's good to have that in your arsenal. And, yeah, they and- kind of weave in and out using it and using the techniques. Yeah, because it's it really just depends where you are. And, like, the benefit to these programs is really finding out kind of where you are, like what – what you're capable of, what your joint integrity consists of, like what your mobility status is. Uh, It's just good information to acquire. And then that way, you know, when when things kind of lead up, like there's a buildup. I I used to bench press quite a bit and my goal was to bench press like 400, over 400 pounds. And so my goal for a while was just, oh, I'm just going to rip as much weight as I can. And uh, you know, there was a, a lead up of tension in my right shoulder. I just felt this impending uh, issue that was that was going to arise out of this. And, you know, if I had this type of a program to then, um, you know, apply proper priming, you know, pre post, like kind of really help to, um, you know, support my shoulder uh, completely. I probably would have been able to, to to reach that goal and stay stay in you know what I was trying to accomplish. Yeah, so but I, I can, got hurt. I can kind of understand where they're coming from with this question because if you're learning about health and fitness and wellness, you're hearing information like stretch this much all the time, and you got to do this cardio, and you got to do this resistance training. Oh, if you lift, make sure you figure out your imbalances so you correct them, and you know make sure you eat this way. And so people are like, oh my god. How can I? How can anybody do this uh, unless they don't work? Unless they don't have a life? You know, that's what they think. Here's the here's two things. First, let's put things in uh, context. Let's be realistic. Uh, I'll use another statistic that'll explain what I'm talking about. The average person, average person in America, spends around two hours a day on social media every single day. Okay, that's the average person. It's more than that, by the way. Teenagers spend even more than that, and I just read another. St- I, I, you might have read statistics that say even more. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. But that's valuable. Time. So right. So, uh, first off, you have time. It's all about prioritizing and making time. So mm. let's not forget that. Okay. Second off, it's all about how you live your regular day, which is much more important than the time you take aside to spend. You know, with a structural workout. And what I mean by that is 
let's say you, you think, oh, I need to do 30 minutes of cardio or 40 minutes of cardio every single day. Well, instead of doing that, instead of taking 40 minutes out of your day to go to a gym or get on a bike or get on a treadmill and do cardio, what if every two or three hours you went for a 10-minute walk? Just that's it. Every two or three hours you have an alarm. Okay, I'm going to take a break and take a 10-minute walk. By the way, there's a lot of shit you can do while you're doing a 10-minute walk. So if you think, oh my God, I can't because I need to get on this call or I need to answer these questions on you know email, right? guess what you can do while you walk? You can do all those things. All right. So all of these things can be implemented and in- incorporated <laughs> into your life. That's why fitness is a lifestyle, not because you're this devoted maniac and you yeah. devote two structured hours a day to exercise, but because your life is structured around making it so that you're a healthier type of individual. The correctional elements that are found, and, and I'll just talk about MAPS Prime and Prime Pro because that's the, the, the person uh, talked about them in the question. Taking those correctional elements and applying them to yourself, you can do that throughout the day. Like Prime Pro, for example, once you discover the correctional movements that you need to do for your body in Prime Pro, <laughs> you can devote literally five minutes I don't know, three, four times a day 90, yeah. on doing them, which is not much time. 90% no, not of those movements and exercises that we have in both those programs, I actually don't do it structured like my workout. You do them throughout the you day. You can do I them do anywhere. Throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. Doesn't I, require I do anything. them throughout the day, and I do them according to what my body's telling me. Like, yeah. I know I've got all these these little issues going on, everything from my ankle pronating to bursitis in my hip to... Uh, a little bit of a forward shoulder on my right side. Like, I mean, I've got all these little things, right? I've got the golfer's elbow on the other side. And I know that, you know, if I'm neglecting it, those things all start to get exaggerated. And so throughout the day, if I actually can feel one of those things, I'm getting down and I'm doing my 90-90s and I'm doing combat stretch and I'm doing I'm doing these little movements that mm-hmm. I know will help get me reconnected to the areas that are causing these nagging pains in my body and so which is all the stuff that's in prime mm-hmm. and prime pro yeah it's like I, standing and sitting i mean yeah. it's it's whatever you know whenever you think of it like there's a couple moves that um, you can just do on the spot. So whatever you're doing, you're sitting, you're you're working on something. You could be in a 90-90 position working on your computer. I mean, there's there's all kinds of different ways to implement this. Well, like Sal said, it's a lifestyle. That's a perfect example right there too. Like, I mean, there, ever since uh, I, you know, went through all this myself and realized that, you know, where this bursitis in my hips was coming from and why and what I could do to help it, um, you know, if you ever catch me sitting on the ground now, I won't just lay on my side or lay how I used to or sit Indian stuff. I'll get in a 90-90 position and I'll actively work on it while mm-hmm. I'm sitting there. Like it's not like strenuous work, no. but me just putting myself in that 90-90 position and getting connected, pressing my knee and ankle down, elevating my internally and externally rotating my hips while I'm in that position. I mean... I'm working on it. That's and it. It, it. So you just start to treat it more like that versus this daunting, long, yeah. you know, regimen. We structured well, that thing, way so people yeah. had the guidance. Exactly. That's yeah. It. We had to write something for somebody to follow, right? Because you can't just get something and be like, oh, well, do it whenever, you know, you feel like it. Right, right. It's people cool. don't yeah, operate right. that way. Like you need you need some kind of a structure. So we, we, we provided that as an initial sort of foundation, but definitely um, make it work for, for your everyday life. I'll like, tell you what. You do. If you're looking... If here's the here's the routine, general structure, and don't forget that the difference between individuals can be pretty dramatic. But generally speaking, if you're looking for a relatively decent uh, level of fitness, health, and longevity, where you look healthy, you're relatively lean, you feel good, your workout, or excuse me, your workout schedule will look something like this: two or three days a week of structured, you know, maybe. 45 to 60 minutes of resistance training and the rest of your training, your flexibility, your cardio, your correctional stuff can be put in throughout the day and put around your day. In other words, you don't need to structure and take out and carve out an hour of exercise except for maybe resistance training because that kind of requires that. Like you can't necessarily build muscle and get stronger you know, here and there because just because you don't have access to weights. Unless you work in a gym, then maybe that might work a little bit too, but Maybe, probably not. So you don't need to devote a shit ton of structured time to fitness and exercise. It's really, most of it is just like like we're saying throughout the day. I even did this yesterday. Yesterday we were in a meeting with uh, you know, a company now that's going to be handling 
our social media and internet presence. And the meeting was from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, I have a very difficult time sitting in a chair and paying attention to Mm. something. It's just very difficult for me. Call it ADD, call it whatever. It's very, very tough for me. And so in the meeting, a lot of times I was standing, I put my foot up on the chair and I do these hip stretches and movements and it it actually helps me pay attention. You can do this when you're working on your email, when you're on your computer, you can sit in a particular stretch, you can activate the muscles of your feet, strengthen your posture, you could do all these, when you're watching TV, when you're having a conversation with your spouse, me and my girlfriend many times, if we're just hanging out and talking, we'll be on the floor and just kind of going through stretches. It doesn't need to always be these hardcore structured you know, type of uh, sessions. In, in fact, the super frequent practice is probably more effective, especially on a correctional uh, from a correctional component. Oh, for sure. I agree with that. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. If you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% and off. Go check it out. Next up is Sayon One. How do you recomp your body? In other words, lose fat while gaining muscle. Are you supposed to be in a surplus or a deficit? So re-changing the composition of your body uh, means basically, you know, let's say I weigh 180 pounds and my body fat is 20%, which is pretty high for a guy. And recomping would be uh, I drop you know, 6% body fat. So now I'm 14% but body your fat. But weight stays the same. But my weight is the same because I've added muscle to replace <clears throat> that body fat. So it's, I think it's, it's I think it's important to, to note that, first of all, it's it doesn't work like uh, it's not happening at the exact same time, right? So if you're if you're catabolic at the moment, like you're you're we're burning fat and you're not building muscle, but over a week or a two week time, they trade off. Yeah, you can trade off, right? So there's moments where you can be in a surplus, or you just fed really hard, had a good training, you sent a good muscle building signal, you had a great training session, and so then you've sent a signal to build, and you fed properly, and you know put yourself in a surplus. Then the body is mm-hmm. now growing, but then you turn right back around and go catabolic again. So it's all about where your body. So if I'm, let's use that example again. 180 pounds. I'm dropping body fat, gaining muscle, uh, and let's say I'm consuming 2,000 calories a day, and that's what I consumed before too. The difference is in changing where my body uses and places those calories. It's literally prioritizing or changing the list of priorities. Mm. And you can see this. There's lots of examples of this. Like somebody who gets an illness can eat the same amount of food, all of a sudden lose weight because maybe they have a a cancerous tumor. Or you can change someone's hormones, keep their calories the same, and they'll either gain muscle or gain body fat depending on the hormone profile. You could do this through exercise as well. So the, the most important key to having your body change its composition without changing its body weight is in the stimulus that you send your body through exercise you have to prioritize that signal so that's you know like one of the main things that sparked the the trigger sessions right absolutely so i mean that's something that uh you know if you think of the training element of it it's definitely the frequency and it's the volume and it's the loudness of the signal you're providing that yes this environment is going to need muscle it's Mm -hmm. going to need muscle to overcome this and so just kind of having this push pull situation with you know your calories of you know kind of being restricted because yes no like we don't need to store uh necessarily all the time like you know so it's this push pull it's these little sort of mini cuts bulk kind of you're playing yeah you're gonna generally be aiming for um and i say generally because like like what adam and justin are saying there's going to be moments you're going to want to speed in a surplus and you want to play a deficit. I actually never, almost ever recommend consistent calories every day, no matter what, even if you want to lose fat or gain. Mm-hmm. I'm always recommending this fluctuation. But generally, you want to aim for, if your goal is recomp without your body uh, weight changing, generally you want to aim for maintenance. However, that maintenance number is going to change if you are indeed doing a good job changing your body's composition. Because... If you are, in fact, gaining five pounds of muscle while losing five pounds of fat, the likelihood of your metabolism 
being the same as low. If what's probably happened now is your metabolic rate has increased right. because you have more muscle, so that maintenance is going to have to go up. So the reason why this is so hard for people to do and why people will either just lose or just gain it's because it requires constant observation. Yeah. This is... Um, it's a lot harder. Yeah, this is next level shit right here. And this is why we don't talk about this very often. And most people will recommend either do one or the other, right? Either bulk or either lean out. Yeah. Like, yeah. We definitely advocate a very slow, gradual leaning out or bulking process or like what we talk about, the mini cuts, the mini bulks, which is pretty much creating that environment. This is also how I like to use uh, carb cycling. So if this is a goal of mine, um, I just did it not that long ago or, you know, I've changed, I'll change my body composition without letting my weight fluctuate more than a pound or two. And that's what I'm trying to do when I, when I do that is like, okay, I'm going to lean out right now and I don't want to just, you base it more off your rigorous uh, activity and uh, yeah. And, yeah. and so what, I, what I'll do is, and I do like to carb cycle. So I'll have these lower. And when I carb cycle, like, uh, I actually, when I drop the carbohydrates, I allow that to also be my lower calorie where some people will replace the calories with, with fat. I'll actually let that be lower calorie because mm. the goal is to burn fat too. So I'm going to have two days where I'm going to be kind of lower calorie catabolic. I know for sure for two days in a row, and then I'll have a higher refeed day. And I try and time that around major muscle groups that I'm trying to focus on or a good training session. So, you know, that, that has been a good strategy for me to, be able to monitor myself closely and make sure that I can do that while also trying to lose body fat. But yeah, this is this is a tough, tough it's thing. Black belt level. Yeah, it is. And and to be at least in the long term, because initially yeah. when you first start training a client, if you're a good trainer, in the first month, you'll probably see recomp. Like I can't tell you I, I've had people want to lose weight <clears throat> and usually in the first month I don't let them lose weight. But when I test their body fat and stuff, I'm like, oh, it looks like you actually lost a couple pounds of fat, but you gained a couple pounds of muscle. And that's just because they were deconditioned. So that that was the other piece that I was going to add to someone trying this. This is not only is this black belt shit because it's challenging on the monitoring side and the tracking and what the, the boys are saying, but it's also black belt on the level of the psychological piece. Because when someone sets a goal to build muscle or lose fat, they most of us attach the the scale number to that so it's really tough mentally for a, a let's say a guy a young boy who's trying to put size on and i remember being this young boy trying to put weight on i just wanted to be 200 pounds no one ever i didn't say i had to be a certain but i just like i never seen 200 pounds i had such a hard time gaining weight i just want to gain weight i just want to gain weight and if the scale wasn't moving I assumed I wasn't eating enough. And so that was my only indicator when really I could have been right on track building muscle, Mm -hmm. but that fucks with that and vice versa. And more so the other way, right? It's more common that we hear, you know, the guy or the girl comes in and that needs to lose a bunch of weight and they're looking at the scale every single day. And even though they can be doing much better, not moving like Sal said, like keeping them the same, it's tough to keep people focused when the scale is not showing them the number that they want, even though what's really happening is really good and they're making great progress. It's, it's still slow in the grand scheme. It's of things. always a conversation I have to have a, with people before, hundred. during and after the process to explain to them, you know, what's going on. But you know, if your body wants to, this is and nobody will debate this. If your body wants to use the same amount of calories that you're already eating to build muscle, it will. And because it's using more calories to towards muscle, or you know what, what do they call nutrient repartitioning, um, I think is the term that you'll use for this. It, you will lose body fat because your body now is going to be utilizing energy from your fat because you're you're putting more of the food that you're eating towards muscle. If your body wants to do that, it'll happen. And you can do this with proper exercise to a certain extent. That's the key here. If you take someone and you have them lift weights properly to where their body's really getting this effective muscle building signal for their body, uh, they don't they don't even have to change their food intake that much. They're going to get leaner as a side effect of their body prioritizing muscle building with the calories that you're consuming. So uh, you know, and, and the reason why I want to make a point of that is I think diet is extremely important, but we've made diet seem like that's the only factor to where your workout doesn't really matter. No, you know, no, it's all know, diet. You know what? I was just thinking of like yeah. some other tips I can give this person of like, what are some of the signals, Adam, that you're looking at when you're going through this? And I'm like, okay, another thing that I, then this is a conversation I'm constantly having with myself when I'm going through this process 
is, you know, I don't I don't want the scale to move. And I know that if I'm making better food choices and I know that my volume in the gym is the same or higher, I know I'm making good progress. I know things are happening. I know that. My body is being fed better than it's ever been fed. So I got I to gotta believe that all of my systems are running better than what they were the week before I was feeding them that way. So you got to think that your systems are running more efficiently. And then I know that my volume is the same or higher than what it was the previous week. Change is happening. I may not see it on the scale. I may not see it yet in the reflection of the mirror yet. But if all th- if those things, if I'm paying attention to those things and I'm really paying attention to them, I know good things are happening. And then you better believe if I can increase my calories and I can increase my volume of training and my scale still doesn't move, then I know I'm definitely winning. Like I've increased volume. I've added more calories to the diet. Scale's not moving, but I've added volume to my training and calories to my diet. We're building muscle, mm-hmm. man. And we're just losing fat too. So so I'm a great example of this. My body weight doesn't change that much uh, relatively recently. So over the last maybe few years where I've really just kind of become in tune with my body, my weight will go between one... 84, 190 maybe. Um, I, it rarely ever does it go over above 190. And I don't even weigh myself that often. It's just when I weigh myself, I notice that it kind of stays around the same. So my my body weight doesn't change much, but the way it looks can change pretty dramatically when my training is really good and on point, when my gut health is good, when my sleep is good. So I know there's some recomp uh, going on. I know that it's more than just like the couple pounds on the scale. It's just the way. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, whoa, man, I look really lean right now. And then I'll weigh myself and I'll be 190, which is a little heavier than I normally am. So I'm like, okay, I guess I must have more muscle uh, than I normally do. So, um, but yeah, this is a, it's a great question because it is difficult, but it's totally possible. And it's all about the signals that you send your body, which a big part of that has to do uh, with your workout. So if you have a good workout program where you're performing well, even if you don't change your food intake necessarily, you may see some recomp uh, going on. Next question is from that man ant. What are your thoughts on the functional patterns guy? Oh, here we go. <laughs> the man ant. You know, I didn't know who he was until just recently. I want to say, was it Joe DeFranco I heard him call out first? Hmm. I don't remember who I heard him talking shit about first. Hmm. Brett Contreras for sure. Yeah, maybe it was Brett. And then I remembered a conversation we had with this this guy. I don't remember this kid's name, but uh, remember the the fitness leader guy over at uh, club sport. I can't think of his name. Oh right. yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, he mentioned this, this guy and he talked all about, Oh, you, oh that's he, right. yeah, he, he's, he, he mentioned this. Sport. Yeah, that was the him. first time I'd ever heard of him. Yeah. And uh, he was like, Oh yeah, I got into it with them. This and that. You guys know who this guy is. I'm like, no, I don't know who this guy is. And I looked him up for a second. I'm like, eh. I mean, guys, he's putting out some good information, but I was like, okay, whatever. Never thought of him again. Yeah. Well then, uh, then recently, I saw a, someone tagged me on a post where he's laying into Joe DeFranco and then another post where Brett Contreras. And Dude, then, I, he's... then I dove into his stuff. Yeah. And he, what sucks, this is what's a bummer, and I feel bad for him because I know he's on a mission uh, to build his own little empire, and, and um, I think he's giving out some really good fitness information. I think he's very knowledgeable. I think he's got a lot of good information. And he's using the tactic, you know, like the, you know, East Coast versus Just West Coast. All the, inflammatory. Yeah, like, you know, let's start all the beef and battles to get attention. And any pub is great pub. And, you know, that type Which of- works in the short term. It does. It's very short term. Very, very short term. And it will get people to look your way and attention. It's unfortunate because I don't think he needs to do that. I think he's got great information. I think he can build an incredible community off of some of the knowledge. Um, I do though, okay, the one knock that I have, I do think that he's an example of some of the guys too that I talk about that uh, become so married to their ideology or their mm-hmm. modality that they probably could spend some time powerlifting or spend some time doing some of these other things. Now, he may not ever care to be that strong or run that fast or um, I, I don't know what his personal goals are. Maybe he doesn't want to build that much more muscle. He likes his physique where it's at. But personally, for me, I want to be a bigger, stronger guy. And, you know, I like that. And so it requires me lifting some heavy ass weight. Do I have a bunch of fucking imbalances that I should be addressing? Absolutely. I'm always working on those things. 
So, you know, um, I'm not a real fan of his how he goes about doing things. I think he does give some good information out there for sure. And I think that his business would do better if he didn't use that as his only approach. I mean, yeah, he, that's for my sure. take. His information is, I mean, he's a very smart guy. He's got some great information. I like the stuff that he posts. He just comes across as a big asshole. I mean, yeah. that's, and that's really the, that's a, that's a problem because he's going to, there's a lot of, and we know a few people like this in fitness. I'm not going to name any names, but we know, personally know a few people like this where they've got good information but a lot of people don't want to listen to them because they're assholes. And here's what's going to happen. I don't know this guy's name. I don't know the functional patterns guy's uh, first name. Yeah, I don't either. But here's what's going to happen. That's what his. It, I know that's his Instagram. That's his Instagram. Yeah, his Instagram name. Or Instagram here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Something? Here's what's going to happen to you. Somebody's going to learn your stuff, and they're going to present it, and they're going to present it in a way and not be assholes, and they're going to fucking blow up, mm-hmm. and you're not. And they're going to copy you. And they're going to take a lot of your stuff. So that's what you got to be. It's, you got to be careful for when a lot of your attention is coming from you calling people out and uh, you know talking a lot of crap. Now I know Mind Pump also has been guilty <laughs> of doing this uh, as well. However, that is not our mo, and it's not the only thing we do. Um, and we also make sure to point out. Well, there's ways to do it, and, and the good that he's a lot very of inflammatory do. the way he does. I mean, it's like well, he just hasn't like calmed down. You know, he's escalated, and I, I used to follow him ever since that guy kind of pointed him out. I was like, oh, interesting. He's he's you know does a lot of rotational work, and he you know tries to to educate as much as possible, like biomechanics and you know proper way to you know joints should move, and, mm-hmm. and uh, like it's good information. It's just. Um, like he really, really like got into this whole like negative uh, stint of of taking down everybody else's uh, methodologies and um, not highlighting any of the actual benefit that maybe there there maybe there are some things to point out right? right maybe CrossFit has some things that you know I have a problem with and you know I'm more than happy to vocalize it but also I'm gonna admit some things that they did very well. And you know that you could take, you could take elements of that and apply it and, and put it into you know your own programming and in your own way of of you know training your body. And so there's there's gems in a lot of these different directions that he's just immediately like burning uh, completely and trying to claim that like his one way is is the well, only way. He's an example of like a lot of what we don't like with academia. You know, it turns into this pissing contest. On you know who's who can argue the best. Well, you know whose whose modality is better. You know whose way of training is healthier for the masses or whatever, or gets the most results. Like it just depends on what you're arguing here. But I, I it's so lame that we get into these you know boxes where everybody wants to my box is better than your box and the way I do things is better than the my way you do things. Box is shaped. It's you like know? okay, dude, like. I, here, th- I think it was. I'll read one of his posts just so you guys get an idea of like he's he just again he's making it, he's kind of this is what he's getting known for so far from what I've heard from other people yeah is focused around this kind of stuff so he did a he did a whole post on yoga and he's like your yoga is is as hyper mobility in, uh, inducing as the next one yours still strictly relies on longitudinal stability to get you through each pose your yoga is bullshit just like all CrossFit is bullshit just like all religions are bullshit like. You didn't have to say like, a lot of whoa. that, dude. Right, 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 right. right. Way to just fucking just uh, spit out my Cheerios. Like, just yeah. carve off like I don't know a few million people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like fuck uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just it's uh, and you know he's getting attention through it, but yeah. and it sucks because a lot of his his mobility works fucking brilliant. Yeah, I love a lot of the stuff he puts out. It's just again, dude, you're you're it's just too much. What do they say? You can attract more honeys with uh, with yeah. honey than you can with shit. <laughs> Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, You can go to www.brain.fm forward slash Mind Pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash Mind Pump and get a 30-day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash Mind Pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next is strength to overcome. How do you guys handle people telling you what you should or should not do with your lives as if they know better? 
Whoa. Oh, this was directed. Is this the one that was directed was, to Adam? It was, and it was, and he went on to talk a little bit more about like I, I guess him and his wife have been together, or her and his wife. I can't remember if it was the wife or the guy who was hmm. messaging this, but they said that uh, they've been together for seven years, and everybody's trying to get them to have kids. And uh, the reason why I said you know this is a hot topic for me currently is uh, you know Katrina and I are thirty six and thirty seven this year. And we've been together over six years and we're not married. We don't have kids. And those that have listened to the show for a long time kind of understand or kind of know my stance on the marriage thing and all that. I've kind of openly discussed that. Uh, And I have a similar stance with the kid thing is I just right now uh, she is heavily motivated uh, career wise right now. So she's climbing the ranks in her profession. Um, I'm in the middle of building uh, the largest business I've ever built in my life. Uh, so I just don't see, I don't see me being the father that I would want to be right now. Do I think that I can, and this is what people always like to tell me, right? Like, Oh, you'll just make it happen. You know, like it's crazy when you have a kid like, well, yeah, well, what if I don't fucking want to do that? Like, (laughs) I don't want to put extra stress or extra, I don't need extra motivation for anything in my life. It's so weird to me how people get insulted. Mm. Like personally, like they personally get insulted because you don't want to have a kid. Well, so you know what that's fucking weird. You know what that is really weird. Well, what that shows me and why I wanted to address this for this person and the way I handle this because it happens is a major insecurity on their part and what what they're going through. They want you to be as miserable as they. It is (laughs) misery (laughs) loves company, and that's all that goes through my head when I feel like someone is so passionate to tell me why I should have children and why I should be married. I go, or they're just insanely judgmental and they need to calm the fuck down. Right, I think that. They're probably thinking like, oh, you don't like kids. Why don't you like yeah. kids? You don't want to do that. Why don't you like I, again? Like, why is it so insulting to someone? It would be like if I asked you, hey, hey, Adam, how come you don't uh, do you, you don't own a pair of red shoes? I don't know. I don't want any. What? What? Yeah, I'd be like, okay, you don't want it. Like, okay, so I'm not even a person. Until- so th- this actually uh, it hits me a little personally as well because not because I have kids, obviously, but I have a sister who doesn't have kids and doesn't want to have kids. Now, you guys know my family, old school, traditional, Italian, Catholic family. And you ima- and especially she's a girl and she doesn't want to have children. You can imagine the pushback that she gets from or she got from everybody in my family. Yeah. Everybody, especially the women in the family who tell her basically in, in not so many words that your purpose for being here on earth, especially as a woman, is to have a child. Like, this is the things that they tell her. Like, what are you doing? Wow. You're going to regret it. It's going to be the worst decision you ever made. You're going to be lonely when you're older. You're going to, you know, this, that, and the other. And I tell these people, because I defend her, first of all, do what you want. If you don't want to do something, like, one of the worst things I think you could possibly do is have a kid when you don't want one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Right, right. That makes Let, no sense to me. That's yeah. a horrible situation to be in. I could not imagine having my two kids and not wanting them. Right, right, right. That's when you get like, you know, parents that are not there or, you know, disconnected. Not saying that that's what you would do, but it's no. just weird. Well, and it's, it's not, talk about the wrong reason. It's not even that. It's not even that I would even be afraid of being there because we've talked about this before off air that, you know, I'm not the type of father that would be disconnected or not love my no, children. You'd be an awesome and, dad. Yeah, and everybody yeah. saw oh, you would be such a great dad. And I believe that. But. I also believe that I'm at a very selfish point in my life, and I also believe that there was there were certain goals, which, you know, everybody has their own goals, so fuck you to come and tell me what my goals or my goals should or should not be, and I had a vision for myself a long time ago on where I wanted to be in my life when I settled down and had a family and kids, and I'm not currently there, and I don't want to do that until I am. And that could mean I'm 50. That could mean never. Like uh, to me, I'm open to all those possibilities. Like I'm not that hell bent on having a child or being married that that is more important. It's just not for me. And it sucks that I can't openly share that and say that that's who I am and just and and be recognized for being truthful and honest with mm. with myself and others than to put on this pretend 
oh, well, we're going to. And I remember when Katrina and I first got together. So she comes from a, a large uh, Hispanic family. And the tons of brothers and sisters and cousins and everybody gets together every weekend. It reminds me of when I dated a girl that was Italian and they had the same thing. They had this big family and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and I love all of them. And they it, it they have a harder time with it than anybody else. It's just when are you guys gonna have kids? When are you guys gonna have kids? It's because yeah. they ident- they identify. It's weird to me. Like they ask you the question, yeah. "Hey, do you you know when are you gonna have kids?" You answer, "Oh, we don't want kids." And immediately you owe them an explanation. Yeah. Why is that well, so? Yeah. You just struck on something. It's it's their identity. Because mm-hmm. like you know after having kids, like I mean, it, it, there's definitely a it, it trans- transforms you like you change sure you know? but some people identify way too much a lot of with that new bro a lot of people identify with it as the greatest thing they have accomplished in their life which is weird yeah. so like, I, I don't yeah. want to be that like, i don't want to let's, let's talk I don't about the wanna, math that i don't want to tell this yeah. my story and, and the part of my story is the greatest accomplishment i ever did was having my children i'm sorry i yeah. just i don't want that to be my story like it maybe it's yours maybe yeah. and i and if you love your children that much then that's awesome it, it, what's well, what, what's crazy about this is i guarantee you're offending some people right of now course. Yeah. of course and it's it's Here's the thing, too. By the way, this doesn't just talk. We're, we're talking about the, the kids' question, but this applies to everything, like the marriage thing, too. Anything, yeah, anything. Yeah, I get like, it for both the marriage. Somebody and the... doesn't want to live like you, yeah. But an, it, the but they're not line. affecting you in any any other way. Like they're not hurting you. They're not stealing from you. They're not whatever. Why does it offend you? Yeah. The way that someone else lives, even if it doesn't affect you, it shouldn't. So always goes back to you. Like if I if if I if someone tells me. And I've I've dealt with this myself. Like if I've met people who I thought were super talented, super talented, smart, charismatic individuals who just don't give a shit about being successful. And they'll tell me, like, I don't really care, Sal. I just want to kind of work and earn a little bit of money. And I almost get offended, like, oh yeah. How dare you like yeah. fucking work hard, man? You're wasting all this talent. And I think to myself, yeah. like, why? Why, why you, do I why are you imposing that on them? Yeah, who cares? That's yeah, them. Right. That's their that, choice. That's like, where I'm at with the whole thing. And cause I I mean I could you know, from my own experience, obviously it's, it's like completely different than yours, you know, and I'm not yeah. going to sit here and like, <laughs> you know, like, like impose that on you. It's like, that's ridiculous to me. Right. Right. Like I, like I, I completely like it, even, even me having kids was like an accident. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, we were, we did not plan for it to happen then. Like right. I was hoping to wait it out, you know, but you know, we just rolled, rolled with it. Yeah. And then, then it became, you know, what it, what it is. But uh, to to kind of to to tell you like hey you have this timeline and you have this and you gotta make this happen like that's so crazy to me I, I think people need to calm down well and people do it with the, the marriage thing they they don't understand that part of me either and the irony in all of it okay is the people who are telling me that I need to get married are divorced are like the people <laughs> like I look at their relationships and I'm like I want if you're the one giving me advice and this is what you think I should do. I don't want to do anything even close to that because I don't want a relationship anything close to what you have. And le- and you guys know me, right? You guys know me for quite yeah. some time, especially you, Justin. Uh, I guarantee. Well, I don't know. Let me ask you. You know, if you were to name the the top five healthiest relationships that you know in your life, I guarantee I, Katrina and I probably crack that top five for everybody in this room. No, you're number yeah. six. He said. <laughs> <laughs> and totally. and I don't know. At least I don't know anybody else that has a relationship. I mean, we've been going for six plus years. We've been through tons of stuff. We travel. We love each other. Like the, our communication is better than anybody I know. It's like, I don't. Why? Why do I want to take advice from somebody who I don't? I don't look up to how they run their relation or how they have their relationship, right. and to give me advice on the relationship. It cracks me up it when people funny. feel that need to do that. So I think you got to kind of have this. You know, and I'm expressing this on the show and I'm vocalizing this. I don't really say anything to these people. I I allow them to say it. And inside I'm going like, oh, this is obviously a reflection on themselves. Either one, they feel like they made mistakes on the decisions they made with their marriage or children or whatever. And so they feel like Mm -hmm. telling me either one is misery loves company or two, they wish they would have done it differently. So they feel they Mm -hmm. want to live vicariously through me. So at the end of the day, them telling me about my life is truly a reflection of their own. Mm -hmm. And so only you know that better than anybody. It used to actually, you know, when I was younger, it would bother me if I heard someone say they didn't want to have uh, children. And the reason why it would bother me is because it made me think that they didn't like kids. Mm. And then I got to a point where I realized, number one, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't like kids. You could love kids and just not want to have them. 
or two, maybe you don't like kids. That's fine too. Like you don't have to like. <laughs> right. You don't have. Uh, yeah, like, okay, you're not mean to kids. As long as you're not walking around kicking, yeah, kicking kind of kids in the head. Too. Well, let's. Yeah, like if you don't like them, you don't. What I don't, people forget to realize is they were a kid once. Well, let's let's break this. Let's that. break let's break this down a little bit. But that's There's, my point. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's break this down a little bit. Very and I'll, and let me let me share. And I know uh, when we had the girls gone wad, they said, you know, Adam, I wish you would share more of your childhood, your story. Well, let me tell you what led to my personality like this. Okay, I'm the oldest of five. I have vivid memories, okay, those that know that my, my real father killed himself when I was seven, my mom remarried into an abusive relationship. At 13 years old, I have a very vivid memory of standing above both my, my parents, okay, and parenting them, teaching them how to communicate to each other. And then I have four siblings that are younger than me that I've been the father figure for my entire life to them. And then I also have a stepfather that was kicked out of my house every six months, then brought back in. So we love him, we hate him, we love him, we hate him, we love him for 10 years of my young adult life before I moved on. So you wonder why I'm in no hurry to get married, right. and you wonder why I don't want any kids. I've been fucking parenting for 35 years already. You should be retired by now. Right. And so, <laughs> Hang up your jersey, man. So, you know, like, yeah, do I want, do I, you know what? I wish I had a little mini me running around. Like, absolutely. Does that not, that sound, and I would love to live vicariously through him playing sports and being a mini me and educating him and teaching him and all those stuff sounds fucking awesome but I'm in I actually could deal with do without it because I don't feel like I completely Dude. missed out on what fucking parenting is like here's <laughs> here's what people think okay people think if you say I don't want to have kids they think oh you're selfish and all you care about is your ego where now that may be true in some cases, in some cases it may not be, but it also may be fucking true when people choose to have kids. Do you know how many people oh, have yeah. children because of their ego? Mm -hmm. because oh, right. they Because they want a kid that they could fucking mold and force. to save a relationship. And, or to save yeah. a relationship. Oh. Like, it, you, idea. it could be good and bad to have them, and it could be good and bad to not have them. It depends on the person. And... It's not my fucking job to judge that. If it's your choice, and again, you're not hurting anybody, why do people care? Like what anybody yeah. does? Like, why should anybody get offended if the dude over there decides to pierce his nose 15 times, or the girl over there decides to have a relationship with another girl? Over here, they decide they want to have an open relationship. Over here, they want to decide they don't want to have kids. And oh, this couple over here has 15 kids. And as long as everybody's cool, nobody hurts anybody. Yeah. It's like the second you find offense in it yourself, even though they're not really it's, doing anything to you, it has to do with yourself. Yeah, always. It's such a reflection of yourself. It's so fucking obvious. And the more passionate you are about it, the worse it fucking is. Like if you really feel the need to tell somebody <laughs> yeah. they should be married or they should have kids or this or that, it's even more, it's worse. It's really yeah. bad. It's like if you think it, it's one thing. You probably, that if you think it, that should already be your sign that you have some things to reflect yeah, on on yeah. yourself. If you fuck and vocalize it you probably got real issues in that department so i mean so well, and a lot of times they just removed themselves from any other you know non-like-minded people like they've created this sort of bias and this 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 environment now where everything revolves around kids and like that's why you know even me is like i'm hanging out and we're doing these play dates and all this kind of stuff is great but you know, like I need interaction with my boys. I need interaction with like people that are single. Like I need that because like, then I'm going to turn into one of these people that, Oh, mm. you know, like this is all we do now. And like, no, dude, like be diverse. It's but funny that you guys picked this question because my, my boys and I literally were, uh, talking about this topic oh, yeah. like today because one oh, of my yeah. buddies just got pregnant so his oh wow. yeah it's his first kids on the way and so this is like my childhood best friend so all of us waited till we were in our 30s before was this the one that you're in his wedding just recently yeah, yeah. he's yeah. the first one yeah he's oh, the first, awesome. yeah he's the first one and so we're all on a group thread and and you know we're all kind of talking for him and it's funny mm -hmm. because this the, this group is the opposite right because we all <laughs> waited like a long time so it's just like yeah, yeah i'm waiting to see how his life changes and i said <laughs> and, yeah i said uh oh, yeah. i'm yeah traveling sex drugs and Toys, yeah, that's all going to oh, change yeah. real quick. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was the guy in, in yeah. our group. So. You know, it's yeah. it's funny too when you it, when you, uh, you think about this and people talk about it like it's all great and it's all awesome. The reality is sometimes it is awesome. My experience is I love my kids more than anything. I'm always going to be very involved in their life. But the reality, statistically speaking, today something like thirty, I think thirty to thirty four percent of children are raised by a single parent. You know, and a, a, the vast majority of the people that left their kids to not be a part of life are men. 
And I've, I'm, I guarantee there's a biological component there. Women definitely evolve to be more connected, to have more empathy. So it's much more difficult. There's also societal pressures. A man can leave their kids and everybody judges them a little bit. A woman leaves their kids and it's like, you're, you're a horrible person. But I'm just saying like, I think one of the worst things you could do is have children when you don't want to have kids. So I find it fucking ridiculous when you've got family and friends pressuring people to have kids who kind of don't want to have them. And a lot of people have had kids in situations well, like that because they think that they're supposed my, to. My mom, yeah. you know, raised my siblings to think in this order that goes, you know, God, family, kids, and that that's everything in life. Like, in, you know, it, 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 you know, once you have been married and you've had children, you're accomplished. Like, that, nothing matters more than that. Money is the root of all evilness, yeah. and children, having children and family is the greatest gift you could ever receive. Mm. Yeah. And so I have a younger sister who's now pregnant again and it, it you know and again to each their own i don't tell her what she can can't have kid or with that but you know personally where she's at like in her life they can't support kids they've got they've mm-hmm. now the, her man that she's with has two now they have two they have four kids they have four kids and they don't have one working car like in just it's just not responsible it's like the yeah. the stress that you're going to put those kids on the environment they have to grow up in like you're really not setting the family yeah. up for success and like to me you think you're doing the selfless thing the selfless thing by being a parent or a mother or a father but you're actually doing something very selfish you're being very selfish because you feel the need that you want or you need this when in reality you're not even in a position to take care of it, it because you're be. still not taking care of your it's the same thing I look at somebody who's addicted to drugs or have these issues and then they go have a child too is like you're not even in a position right now to take care of yourself. What the fuck makes you think you're in a yeah. position to take care of another it, being? It can definitely be that way. Right. It's, but it's, again, it's but, funny. It's, no, no, no. Not only can it be de- – it's more common. It, uh, it's more common. Yeah. That's more common than the other way, bro. There's yeah. more There's more of those stories. Maybe. I would, you know, I would debate which one's more common, but you're right. It can be a very, very selfish act, and it can be a very, very selfless act. It can be a wonderful, amazing thing. Or it can be a horrible thing, and this is true for not having kids. I'm sure there are people, guarantee you there are people, I've met a couple, who decided not to have kids for whatever reason. They had a bad childhood, they had a bad relationship, they got divorced and said, fuck it, I never want to have kids again, who then got to a certain age where it became unrealistic to have children, who regretted it. I'm sure those people exist you know, as well, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I know a couple of them. It's not black or white, um, but again, yeah. like uh, I don't think anybody should be telling anybody <laughs> yeah, how to There's live the, yeah. if they're not hurting anybody or stealing anybody from anybody. If they're happy, like, and, and, fucking let them and do I, the thing, the, the advice is to the person who's getting told the advice, right? So you know, the way I handle it now is you just can't. You can't get emotional about it. You can't yeah, react you to just it. Let it I, just, I just ignore That's it. That's a yeah. great point because yeah. the same thing right. that makes that person feel, you know, personally insulted by you not wanting to have kids can get activated in you when you get insulted by their insult. Right. No, absolutely. It becomes your ego against If theirs. I if I acted the way I'm acting right now on the show, the way I'm expressing my passion to you guys because right. that's this is not how I would react. Like you just I don't right. I don't yeah. even let them know like what I'm sharing with all the personal stuff I just shared that doesn't get shared. I don't say all those mm-hmm. things, you know, but this is what's going on in my head. I'm thinking like fuck, you're an idiot for telling me this, but you just can't say that because then again, then it looks like you're the one with the major issue and it's like, no, it's not an issue, it's just a choice that I, that I have and I just have a different view on it. I have a di- and I like to share with people, you know, we obviously probably had different upbringings and and different views on family and children this and that and I respect yours. You know. yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, I think you'd make an excellent father, but uh, until then, you'll be a great uncle <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to yeah. your nieces and nephews. and to, is, uh, we, and got, to we got kids that we can bring close. My kids yeah. and Justin's kids. Just don't touch them. Yeah. Uh, check this out. 30 Days of Coaching. It's valuable information on everything that is fitness and wellness, and we're giving it away for free. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com, register for the information. You'll get it immediately, and you'll be blown away by all the free stuff that we're teaching you. Also... We've got some awesome videos that we post on YouTube every single day, ranging from comedy to fitness. Uh, All you got to do is go to Mind Pump TV on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. And finally, if you want to ask us a question that we can answer on an episode like this one, go to Instagram. The page is Mind Pump Media and ask the question underneath the Q&A pictures that we post. You can also check out our personal pages. My page is Mind Pump Sal. 
Justin is Mind Pump Justin, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.